Now I'm going to ask Karen to talk a little bit more. And now you're going to be talking about how to run a Rotaract Club. Thank so you. This, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, by the way, we um, sent two students this past year to the International Rotaract um, uh, meeting. It was in Montreal. Um, our Rotary Club sponsored them. It made such a big difference having those two students. In fact, one was our president and the other one had been our former president. And it was very inspirational and they came back very excited about all the opportunities but also the networking. Just like you said, Carol, they've made lots of new friends. So um, I guess what I want to do is encourage Rotara Rotary Clubs to invest in your Rotaract Club. It may take some money. I remember when we first started out, we were a little bit shy to ask the Brookline Rotary Club to help us. And once we got over that shyness, they were very, very willing to buy us a banner um, to help sponsor um, some of the students to do activities. So I think that's really important to not feel shy. So um, Carl asked me to, to present Victor's presentation, How to Run a Rotaract Club. I may ad lib a little bit. I may have to ad lib a lot because it doesn't want to advance the slide. Um, yeah. You want to just press, there's not that many slides, but it doesn't want to sort of go. Right, yeah. Okay, so uh, again, I didn't put this together. Victor put it together, and Victor, I think, is in Florida, in California, California. So, someplace warm. Um, he put together some um, select topics for running it, holding the meeting, service projects, university communi uh, community engagement, Rotaract, uh, Rotary engagement, president citation criteria. I've mentioned some of those already in my presentation. That's why I went over time. I know you're counting, Carl. Um, <laughs> if you can advance the slide, that would be great. So engagement in meetings. Um, twice a month, we need to have a meeting. And it needs to be posted. And one of the things, again, I'm going to you know, share what our club has done. Um, they have a Facebook um, site. Social media is really important uh, to reach people. So Facebook has been great in posting. As far in advance as you can is great. And then if you have an email list, a lot of times you'll see that a lot of people come to the first meeting um, or they sign up and you might have a hundred people um, on your mailing list. Not all of them are going to come, but if you keep bombarding them with these kinds of social media messages, you will get more people coming. But it's really important to have an agenda ahead of time so that people can pick what, what's really of interest to them. Meetings should include some socialization. Um, we do happy change. Um, in ours and it allows the students um, after we um, do the four-way test at the beginning of um, our meeting. I think that's extremely important to do the four-way test at the um, start. Um, going around and doing happy change lets students say what they're happy about and that bit of socialization really works. You need to do club business but there has to be a balance. Sometimes we have um, program presentations. Susan has come, Carl has come, um, Carol, you, you were at um, a meeting, and I think now I remember we were talking about polio at that time. The final itch. It was so, that was so inspirational. You're, you presenting inspired students to want to learn more, and I think that's really important. Um, and we recruited our club president from that. It was very, very exciting. The key is keep it fun. That's so important. So, you know, goofy things to do. Um, things that make people want to come because there's a lot of competition for coming to a meeting every other week. A lot of it has to do with just academics. So making it a fun meeting and what's not on here that I highly recommend is having food. Food is really important. So cookies, whatever you want to have there, that's um, again, something to have. Sponsor club can really help with deciding, you know, or helping what to, to provide as well. And sending out bi-monthly meeting newsletters to keep members informed. I actually think it should be um, on a regular basis that your Facebook site or whatever, maybe a blog, um, is up to date um, on a regular basis and that's really your anchor. One of the things I think is really important too with engaging in meetings is taking photographs. And you'll see that we have a lot of photographs. Having those photographs to remind people of what we've done is really important. Could you advance the slide please? So projects. 
Um, you, you asked about you know, what resonated at Boston University. There are so many projects, and what we find is that it's organic. So students come to Rotaract for a reason. Maybe they were involved in Interact. When we find that someone was involved in Interact, we know they're going to be in Rotaract because they've had such a great experience in high school. But people come with projects that resonate with them, and finding out, doing a survey when you first start out, I think is extremely helpful to find out what service projects. Asking someone to take responsibility for that project is important. It can't be that executive board doing everything. So trying to get someone who says, oh, we want to do Valentine, we did this, Valentine cards for older people who can't get out on Valentine's Day. Um, and we worked with Wheels on Meals to get those Valentines delivered. Somebody initiated that. Or Jump Start. We want to read books to children. So somebody has to have something that they're excited about and then work on. You may have to identi identify some funding. Um, we've done a lot of fundraising. Um, we, for years, were selling um, flowers on Valentine's Day. And we would hit up our Rotary Club, selling the Valentine uh, flowers, and then around campus. So fundraising is something that, that we do as well. Um, and then the Sponsor Club uh, can provide assistance. The university and community engagement. The university, great source of, of assistance. They may have lots of projects already that you can capitalize on. And then you can partner with other organizations. We did really well partnering with um, the India Club at Boston University. And one year we did lip sync. Everybody know what lip sync is? Lip syncing where you, you have um, music playing and then you um, sing along with it. Um, we did a gigantic fundraiser. You went to it. It was so much fun. Our dean of students, we found out, liked to lip sync when he was in college. So it, partnering with other clubs is really important and it brings up the numbers of people coming to the events. Um, Victor had here that Rotary Advisors can help Rotaract and you know he has the three very important things down here of friendship, engagement, and action and I think that's the bottom line. Again, one of the things I think we have to always keep in mind um, on a university or community level, there's a lot that's competing for people's attention and service. So making it be about engaging and fun and friendship and taking action is important. And then there's the um, presidential citation. Do we have any of that information in the packet? No. But we can get that to people. Um, so I think that that's really important because this could be something that um, motivates the Rotaract Club for selecting uh, a project that they can get nice visibility um, and accolades as well. And so there is uh, information here on the presidential citation, which I think is really Im important um, to, to think about. Um, Polio Plus is another project that resonates so well and our Brookline Rotary Club does a lot with that and our students, I think we are in front of still Trader Joe's and the students are there, um, uh, not every year, but many of the years. And I think we have one more slide. That may be it. Um, can I answer any questions again? You know, I have to say that Victor put this together and I'm, I'm trying to ad-lib a little bit. <laughs>